Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a spirally, twirly, kind of a, a, a mist type of galaxy effect in Photoshop that you could use for um, a screensaver or, or maybe a desktop picture or something like that. Um, or, you know, you could certainly find a number of uses for it maybe on the web. Um, but, uh, but that's up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'll just show you right now. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take our background layer and we'll press Control i to invert it. Um, I believe if you go to uh, Image, Adjustments, and then to Invert, that would do the same thing. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is we'll add a new layer, and we'll just uh, click on the New Layer button in our Layers palette there. We will select our uh, Circular Marquee Tool, which uh, if you just click on your, your uh, rectangular one and hold down <clears throat> it should go to your, uh, it should show you your elliptical marquee tool and then select that. Make sure that you have a feather set at 50 pixels. Then hold down the shift key and click and drag. And then we will next go to filter up at the top, down to render, and then to clouds. And that's kind of the effect that it'll give you. Um, make sure that that's in the middle of the page so it doesn't clip any of the edges off. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is right click on that new layer that we made and go to our blending options. We'll press down Alt on our keyboard and click on the top left black node there. And what that'll do is it'll split the node into two pieces and we'll drag the right piece all the way over to the right. And what that'll do is it'll uh, kind of uh, change our blending mode so that you can kind of see through that fog a little bit more. Now we'll take this uh, this layer that we just made, and we'll go up to Edit, down to Transform, and then to Warp. And it'll set up this sort of uh, grid system for you. Up at the top uh, left of your screen, you should see uh, a warp kind of uh, settings box. And you uh, click on it and go down to Twist, is what we want. And then you want to set the bend to, uh, let's just set it for 100%. And then we'll uh, go ahead and click on our arrow over on our toolbar and click Apply. Um, if you want it to twist more than that, you can certainly do the effect again, and I think I'm going to, so we'll do it to Edit, Transform, Warp, set our uh, overlay setting to Twist, and we'll make the bend 100%. And we'll go ahead and select that, and go Apply. Now it's a little twistier. Uh, maybe what I'll do now is I'll press Control T and do a little transform, and we'll make it a little bit bigger. I'll just drag one of the corners out and hold down Shift. That'll just make it a little bit larger for us to work with. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. That's where we are right now. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I'll copy this layer twice. Uh, I'll press Control J to make two copies of the layer. Um, what I'll do is on this layer copy one and certainly you could just drag that uh, layer one into your uh, layer button there and that would also make a copy by the way uh, but what we'll do is with uh, one of the new layers that we made one of our copy layers is we'll double click on it and we'll go to color overlay we'll leave the first one being red and that's kinda what that looks like right now uh, maybe you'll take the opacity down to fifty percent on it that looks alright then we'll take our other copy layer and we'll uh, double click on it and make its cover overlay a different color, maybe blue. Which will kind of make a purple color altogether. Um, what we'll do is we'll take that and we'll make its opacity uh, 25%. That'll kind of make it a, that purpley color that I was talking about. And what we can do is uh, on this top layer we can add a, a layer mask by clicking our layer mask button and we'll take our eraser with a very soft brush we'll take the hardness down to zero and maybe uh, an, uh, about a hundred pixel brush and we'll just take the opacity maybe down to seventy or so and we'll just brush away some of the areas that we think we want to let some of that red color go through and likewise we can do that on our first layer copy 
we can make another layer mask and we can just kind of brush away some of this stuff and let some of our original blue color show through. And you can go as crazy as you want with this because uh, you'll end up with something that looks kind of like this. So you have these uh, three different, or maybe I just did I just do two, two different colors, red and blue on there. Uh, and you can add as many colors as you want. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is we'll select these three layers that are these uh, swirly layers. We're going to go ahead and change the perspective on it. So what we'll do is with those three layers selected, we'll go up to Edit, Transform, and to Perspective. We'll zoom out a little bit so that you can uh, see what I'm doing. We'll just drag one of the uh, one of the corners in so it kind of flattens it out a bit. Something like that ought to be pretty good. Then we'll press Control T. We'll kind of tilt it the way that we want it to tilt. Something like that it might be pretty good. And uh, and that's kind of the look that we have so far. You can see this red kind of cuts off on the edge there a little bit, so maybe what we'll do is we'll find that red layer, which we probably should have named red. But anyway, we found that red layer, and we'll just erase some of that edge away with a very soft brush once again. And that's looking very good. Um, maybe we'll select all three of those layers once again. And as you can see, it's kind of about playing around with the layers as well. But maybe what we'll do is we'll do a go to edit, down to transform, and to distort, and you can kind of just distort it however you want to kind of change the perspective as well. So I'm just going to drag some of these corners down to kind of flatten the perspective a little bit. Maybe I'll drag this corner up a bit. Something like that looks pretty good. And I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see it. This is pretty much the effect that I was wanting to go for, and this certainly works well for a, a nice uh, desktop display uh, background or maybe a screensaver. You could have a few of these kinds of images and, uh, and set that as your screensaver. Or uh, certainly come up with any other reason on your own for this. Uh, it can be used for many things. So I hope you learned something. Uh, please subscribe to my blog. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, and uh, thanks for watching.